Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard from Biostar. This is the Biostar Hi-Fi A85W. So let's start off with a closer look at the retail box as well as a bit of explanation in case you are not familiar with AMD's current line of APUs. That's accelerated processing units uh, and as opposed to CPU. Uh, there's a couple different lines of processors out from AMD right now and to help clarify which one you will need to be compatible with this motherboard it's not that one. Okay, this is an FX processor, so this is their processor-only desktop series. Uh, currently, you have the FX series going with the bulldozer and the pile driver uh, iterations. Uh, but what you have here is an A85 chipset motherboard, and the socket is FM2. So this is an FM2 socket motherboard as opposed to the current line of desktop uh, sockets, which is AM3+. Plus. And then with uh, FM2, you also have the last ver uh, generation of APUs, which went into the FM1 socket. So bear in mind, if you're buying this motherboard, it's an FM2 socket here. You want to purchase an FM2 socket APU from AMD, and uh, those will have the prefix A4, A6, A8, or A10. Now, another thing I want to talk about here is the chipset, and currently that's the A85X chipset. There's a couple other chipsets that came out when AMD first released their initial APUs, and uh, those were codenamed Lano. Uh, those had the, uh, pardon me, those had the A55 and A75 chipsets available. The A55 and A75 are still hanging around for FM2 sockets. Uh, just bear in mind that the A85X that we're showing you here is more geared towards the higher end APUs, so the A8 and the A10. A10 for example, so hopefully that gives you guys a little bit better clarification of what APUs are going to fit properly in this board and uh, just a much more simpler way would be to look right here, it says A10. Uh, and that is, generally speaking, the type of processor, so like the A10 5800K would be a great fit for this particular motherboard. Uh, but apart from the sockets and the fact that you can use AMD APUs in this motherboard, uh, we want to talk about, of course, the chipset, the A85X chipset, as well as the fact that you've got a big speaker here, and this is the hi-fi version of this motherboard. So they put a lot of uh, time and effort into expanding the uh, sound capabilities of this motherboard. So you get smart ear as a BioStar's uh, smart ear functionality. You also have the hi-fi grounding, hi-fi power, hi-fi amps. Uh, you also get for video outputs dual link DVI. Uh, you also have USB 3.0 super speed. And this also is Windows 8 compatible. We have some additional information on the back here. Uh, so lots of information here. You guys can look over that in detail if you want. But um, this particular motherboard geared towards folks uh, who want a enhanced audio experience as compared to a lot of uh, the built-in audio. So uh, you have uh, stuff such as a high sampling rate, ground isolation circuit, independent audio power design, uh, built-in amplifier, user-friendly audio software. All those features, of course, uh, noted here. You also get stuff like a HDMI 1.4a output, uh, special capacitors and resistors uh, th that are designed specifically uh, for use with audio and uh, that sort of thing. So next up, we're going to take a look inside the box at accessories. First off, we have a Biostar AMD series. Uh, this has your software as well as your drivers on it. Chances are there's updated versions of the drivers available directly from the Biostar website. So check that out rather than installing directly off of the disk. But you can do that, especially if you need to get your internet connection up and running. Here's the user's manual, and this is the user's manual for both the A75 and A85 versions. So there's some slight variations from the different chipsets. Uh, we're looking at the A85 here, and I will uh, sort of explain to you guys what the difference is between those along the way. But the manual is, of course, very important to have on hand. It has listed all of the specs for the hardware that's integrated into the motherboard, as well as important stuff like orienting the, uh, the APU into the socket and all that good stuff. Uh, other than that, just a few more accessories. So we have an input-output shield right here for the back of your case. Uh, they have uh, punched in the uh, indicators for which plug is which. You also have some serial ATA cables. And look, a Biostar... Uh, Velcro strap, which is very handy for cable management. Uh, and they're providing you with four serial ATA cables. They are all black, and they all have straight plugs, and they're all SATA revision 1, 2, or 3 compatibles, and they have the, uh, the little clasp holder on each end. Here's a look at the motherboard. As you can see, we have a standard ATX form factor. Uh, the board is primarily black. The PCB is a very dark brown, and then we have a couple blue highlights on some of the heat sinks. Let me just flip around here to the back so you guys can get a better look at the PCB. There you go. Uh, very, very close to black, but uh, if you look at it close, you can tell it's just a, a dark brown color. So it should blend in with the color schemes of most systems out there. Uh, also, while we're looking at the board in total, I wanted to point out your fan headers. You have a CPU fan header. It's a four-pin 
PWM fan header up there at the top, and then two more case fan headers, uh, one right here just to the right of the audio connectors, and then another down here at the bottom center under the PCI slot. Next up, we're going to look at the board in detail. We're going to start in the bottom right with the front panel connectors. So there's the color-coded set of front panel connectors right there. It's even got a little chart underneath so you can tell immediately which ones are which. Above that, you actually have a, a post debug LED, so that can be used uh, as you're going through post that will cycle through a bunch of codes. If you're just getting your system up and running for the first time and you have any problems, it uh, is very handy to have a, a post code LED so you can determine what the issue might be. Another thing to point out, you have your BIOS uh, ROM chip right above it, and so that is um, one of the swappable ones. So uh, if it ever becomes necessary, you can contact BIOS Star to replace that chip. Uh, generally, that's only a, a worst case scenario if, for instance, your power goes out while you're doing a BIOS update. Also next to that, we have a couple uh, surface-mounted power and reset switches, so uh, little buttons you can push to turn the system on and off, which is especially handy if you're doing an outside-of-the-box build before you put everything inside your case and you don't have your front panel connectors wired up. Next to that, we have some USB 2.0 headers, so these can be plugged in to enable some uh, front panel USB 2.0 ports. You also have the aforementioned system fan header. To the left of that, you have a COM header. You have a consumer infrared header, a SPDIF out, and then finally your front panel audio connector. So this is where you would connect the front panel audio cable from your chassis, and that would enable your front panel mic and headphone jacks. Above that, you will notice the Puro Hi-Fi uh, a codec chip, which is actually right underneath that. This is some electromagnetic, electromagnetic shielding, so this is going to help reduce interference with the chip from other components. Another thing you'll notice is uh, sort of this lighter colored strip right there, and that's where they have actually uh, done a little bit of separation work with the PCB, so uh, the audio components, such as the uh, caps that you can see right there, which are some of the Puro Hi-Fi uh, audio componentry that they've integrated onto the board, separated from the rest of the hardware on the board, and that is again to reduce uh, interference electromagnetic of the of the electromagnetic variety and whatnot. And that strip goes all the way up the board and even uh, wraps right around the analog connectors and your from your real rear panel audio. So there's your uh, audio solution on this board. Next to that we have the PCI Express area uh, with some PCI Express and some PCI slots. So at the very bottom we have some legacy PCI slots, so if you have older PCI devices you can plug them in right there. A couple single link PCI Express slots here and here for add-on cards. And then you have a full 16x PCI Express slot as well as a 4x PCI Express slot. So 16x and 4x and uh, this slot is where you would install a discrete graphics card if you so chose to do that. Uh, that is optional, however, because this is a APU motherboard, and APU, by definition, has both a CPU and a GPU integrated onto the same chip. So if you're using a Trinity uh, APU, then you already have graphics, and uh, you're really only going to want to install a graphics card here if you want to go with a higher-end graphics card for, high for more graphics performance. Or another option is actually to set up what AMD calls dual graphics, which is different from... Uh, for instance, Crossfire X, where you combine two graphics cards together. But dual graphics will allow you to take, for example, a graphics card such as these here, pair them with the integrated GPU in an A6, A8, or A10 series uh, APU, and then um, here's just sort of a chart that Biostar has included to let you know what's a good solution for that. For example, some just say it's available, but you don't necessarily want to use it because you're not going to get much of a performance boost. Whereas, for example, if you have an A10 with a 7660D and you want to pair it with a 7570, you can do that. Uh, it will work in a Crossfire X-like manner to boost the graphics performance, kind of uh, use the graphics performance of both GPUs together. Uh, again, that's sort of an interim, so kind of base level, you'll have your APU in your, uh, or you have the GPU in the APU. Next step up will be dual graphics, where you want to get one of the specific graphics cards that can work with dual graphics. And then the third, third step is if you really want to do some higher end gaming, some newer titles, or you want to turn on some more eye candy, would be just to get a discrete graphics card. Because if you go with a higher end discrete graphics card, even that is going to perform, or outperform uh, a dual graphics solution. So hopefully that gives you a better uh, idea of how that works. Uh, next up, before we move on to the chipset area, we have tucked in right here a little USB 3.0 front panel connector. So you can use that to connect uh, front panel USB 3.0 or rear panel if you have a little PCI bracket adapter. Next to that, under the BioStar logo and heatsink is your uh, A85X chipset. 
And the A85X uh, chipset is a, a bit of a boost, a, a, kind of a, a step up from the A75 that's been available since uh, the original Fusion platform launched. Uh, but one of the benefits you get from the A85X is you get a bit extra SATA connectivity. So with A85X you get eight Serial ATA Revision 3 uh, connectors as opposed to six available with A75. Uh, and then another thing you get with A85X is you can actually do RAID 5 uh, with this configuration. You can also do RAID 1, RAID 0, or RAID 10. Uh, again, that was also available with A75. With A85 you get more SATA ports. You also get the ability to do RAID 5 configuration. So that's a nice bump up in your storage options. Moving up the side of the board, Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, but all these are SATA Revision 3 compatible 6 gigabits per second. So even for uh, fast SSDs, you can plug them all in right there. Uh, moving up the side of the board, though, we have our, your main 24-pin motherboard power connector to plug in the power connector from your uh, power supply. And then next to that, you have your DDR3 DIMM slots. Uh, this is DDR3 dual uh, channel capability, so you're going to want to install your uh, DDR3 DIMMs in sets of two. Uh, you can actually support up to 16 gig DIMMs in each of these slots, and uh, you can actually also support overclock speeds of up to 2400, according to the box at least. The manual says 2133, the box says 2400. I'll go with the box, it can do 2400. That's what they're telling us. And uh, one thing I do want to note is if you're going to be using the integrated GPU in your Trinity APU, it uh, really, really helps to get some high performance, high speed memory. So I'd recommend if you're going to be using that, uh, that iGPU in there, get at least 1600 speed memory, if not 1866 or something even higher than that. Uh, and then of course, as, as mentioned, you can go all the way up to 2400 with this one. Uh, you're going to want to be using 1.5 volt DIMMs, although it will support others. And you can have a total of 64, gig <coughs> 64 gigabytes of DDR3 installed total. Next set, of course, we have our FM2 socket. Again, bear in mind, FM2 is not backwards compatible uh, with the original, with the original uh, Fusion Lano APUs. You're going to want a newer Trinity APU, uh, and uh, all of the specs and compatible CPUs are listed on the Biostar website for that. Uh, you have this uh, same mounting solution that's been in use with AMD for quite some time, so it's compatible with a really wide variety of aftermarket CPU coolers if you want to go that route. And then next to that, you have the power delivery. So you have a bit of a heat sink on here to help keep your MOSFETs cool. You can see your chokes right there. You have a six phase power delivery configuration for the CPU. And then uh, to the left of that, you have a single four pin supplemental CPU power connector. Uh, so you're definitely gonna wanna plug that in to make sure you're getting enough juice for your APU. And then uh, finally, we're going to be taking a look at the input and output ports on the side. So first of all, up top here, you have a PS2 port for a keyboard. Uh, very nice to have a PS2 port because some folks are using older keyboards uh, that have, for example, N-key rollover and you still need a PS2 port for that. Uh, you also have a USB 2.0, 1, 2, 3, 4 of those. You have HDMI out, dual link DVI out, and VGA out. And again, these are all for the integrated GPU in your uh, Trinity APU that you install and that's where your video outs, video outs come from that. Uh, also, you have a gigabit uh, internet that's provided by a Realtek RTL 8111F uh, chip integrated onto the board. And then finally, a couple more USB 3.0 ports. And then all of your analog audio outputs for your integrated Pro Hi-Fi audio solution. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Biostar Hi-Fi A85W motherboard featuring the FM2 socket for AMD Trinity APUs. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.